What's up, friend? It's Freaky Friday. Exactly. Are y'all out here looking for the hoes? Are y'all out here looking for the hoes in the hotels? <laughs> if y'all going to the whole house, call Trisha and see if you can borrow her wig. <laughs> her blind wig. But if you staying at home and uh doing prayers and scriptures and uh sangria, then you call Ariane because you know she got the shoes, the dress, and the uh, tilted hat to match. Anyway, y'all, fuck them. <laughs> No, fuck them, y'all. Happy Friday, exactly. I hope y'all out enjoying your day, getting your brunch on, smoking on some tweeds, popping a gummy child. If you at work, then just, friends, subscribe and like this video. Watch some of my other videos. Just snickle and giggle until you can get out and enjoy your real life. <laughs> right. I was getting ready to go get my toes done, but I was like, I'm in a relationship. Let me be loyal. <laughs> Let me come talk a little shit you know, before I get my weekend started. Anyway, child, let's talk about some reunion shit. We're going to talk about uh, Martell and the tea that Tasha K had. Not Tasha K. The tea that Queen Sheba had dropped last night, girl, about Tasha K and Martell and all the rest of them with Mel, I guess. But we also going to talk about Mia. Did y'all see that Mia did an interview with Carlos King, child? And she called Gordon everything but the child of God. She said this man was a... We're going to talk about it. And I'll put the timestamps below if y'all don't want to listen to this Love and Marriage Huntsville shit or y'all just want to listen to the Mia shit. Girl, Gordon. Girl. <laughs> you signed up for that. Is Gordon African? Is Gordon Nigerian? Exact Girl, or is Gordon just a regular old black geezer? child whatever he is we gonna talk about his geriatric ass what we do know is that penis ain't stopped working according to Mia. <laughs> oh no child but first let's talk about some love and marriage huntsville shit as y'all can see remember we was just talking about who gonna be the best dress and the worst dress first of all mel came through looking like a blue goddess I, I was very proud of my Scorpio sister. It was giving Jay Bolin's top of the line. She had the little, you know, silky flower thing posing to it. I was like, okay, bitch. I love the color. The color popped on her skin, and I like the blind with it. I think the black, I think black her would have made it look too regular. The blind gave it the pop that it needed. So I was like, okay, Mel was slaying at the reunion. And another girl. Who posted a little something something if y'all ain't seen it this on my shorts or whatever sunny posted a little something something in the hotel room in la last night on her first reunion and i gotta give it to her i got if y'all ain't seen it i apologize go check out my shorts um go check out my shorts or whatever i posted a little video that she posted on her uh instagram story last night Sunny Delights. Did y'all go tell y'all master I told her that she needs to make sure she looking fine as a motherfucker? Because Sunny look good. Sunny look the best I've seen Sunny ever look. She didn't have her forehead covered, but it was giving very much natural curls with the tresses or whatever. I noticed um, Gwendolyn did. She tagged her hairstylist, Gwendolyn, which is her best friend. The girl I told y'all I went to high school with. Anyway, she was giving very much pretty, natural this is how Sunny should always show up on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Because the face was a 10 for me. If she, if Sunny gets the dress right, Sunny is going to slay. So them hoes can talk all the shit they want to, but as long as you sitting pretty, don't nobody give a fuck. But speaking of sitting pretty, bitch, y'all seen, so she had on like this black, like uh, some pants and like a little bodysuit looking thing. And a lot of people is saying that Sunny look like she might be pregnant. Do y'all think she plump or pregnant? Because I told y'all when she played in Sunshine, like back in the day, Sunny, see, Sunny is a natural thick girl to me. I don't know if she thin and she just fluctuated or whatever. But in that series, she was a plump girl. Kind of like the size that she was in the video that I posted. So I'm not sure if Sunny just gaining weight because her man in jail, the internet streets getting on her motherfucking nerves, people calling her mega mind and shit. Maybe she just stressed out and she eating some motherfucking cheesecake. <laughs> she eating some cheesecake or Emo's pizza all the time. You know what I'm saying? And she didn't got plump. It could be a little good. We we all been there, child. I get fat. I get fatter and chunkier every time. Like it's that time. Ooh, anyway, y'all. 
But we do know she's been going through in vitro and stuff. So she might be pregnant because she did post like another black picture. A picture with her with like all black like a month ago on her Instagram. And she was touching on her stomach. So I thought maybe she was trying to tell people she was pregnant too. So drop down in the comments. Go look at the video. Tell me do y'all think that is a pregnancy bulge? It, I mean... Do, is it given maybe she two or three months or something like that? Or do y'all think Sunny just think, you know, gain weight? She, you know, eating that good ass fried rice in St. Louis. Can I get a half order of shrimp fried rice, extra shrimp, extra bean sprouts in a big box <laughs> with an egg roll and a great vest soda? Anyway, so we don't know. But what I can say is Sunny looks good. As long as Sunny get her dress right. It's giving. It's giving. It's giving. Especially for your first reunion, Pooh. Um, Trish, I hope you change that wig before you get on stage. Tisha, I told y'all she got that burgundy hair. So she, because of that color hair she got, I hope she keeps it cute with the dress. I hope she goes like black, brown, neutral colors. You know what I'm saying? Since her hair is that different color. I don't know, child. I don't know. Tisha, we praying for you, girl. <laughs> Tisha and tea baggers, we gonna pray for you, girl. So when I was watching Tisha though, uh, her story, girl, not Tisha had two of her friends there with uh some little black jerseys on. I should I'm gonna post the video on my TikTok. If y'all don't follow me on TikTok, make sure y'all do. It's on the rocks with Jada. I told y'all I'm trying to get a creator account. Exactly. So help your friend out. <laughs> so go follow me on TikTok. I'll probably uh, post all of the videos, like a little compilation video or whatever, with all of the behind the scenes reunion tea and shit people been uh, posting on their stories. Anyway, so Tisha had two of her friends dressed in like two little black baseball jerseys and it say T Squad on it. It was cute for what it was, but I know y'all not talking about Melody need cheerleaders when this girl always need backup. Always. I wonder if she gonna pull a little gimmick and have the two girls in their little T-Squad shirts try to like come out on the reunion or something like that. Cause you know Tisha always gives us a gimmick on the on the damn reunion. Always a gimmick that falls flat. Remember when she bought them um them little puppets? Those uh what are those called? Are those called puppets? Remember when she bought those puppets out? But Kiki and Mel and they fell flat. Even Marceau was in birds. He was like, damn, that was stupid. <laughs> damn, my wife's stupid and corny. <laughs> anyway, child, so tell me, um, tell me what y'all uh, thought about how Sunny looked or whatever. Tisha, we still gonna pray for her. We don't know what Neil gonna be looking like. Girl, so speaking of Tisha, so yesterday was Marceau's birthday. So we know who is looking for the hoes this weekend. <laughs> I'm looking for the hoes. And we know who is going to be looking for the hoes this weekend. And I ain't saying it's the Scott brothers. But it might be. Bitch, I might be. Nah, anyway, child. Girl, so Marceau, of course, reposting all of these people who, uh, you know, said happy birthday and shit. Girl, so Tisha posted yesterday evening like... My man, my man, my man, and my marriage. <laughs> my man who in my marriage, my marriage to my man. <laughs> Happy birthday, Marceau. The entrepreneur, the legend, the Obama 2.0. I said, come on, say I'm <laughs> I had to read that girl. I was reading like Martel with my finger. I was like, entrepreneur, legend, Obama 2.0. I'm like, this bitch must have meant Obama, Osama bin Laden. I know you ain't talking about Barack. <laughs> I know you ain't talking. I know you ain't comparing your husband with them hips and that frog face to my Barack. <laughs> my Barack. Exactly. And I heard from somebody who went to the event that it was a lot of disorganization involved. I heard it was only one line for a whole bunch of motherfuckers and it was a lot of disorganized shit going on. Now, I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> and shout out to the girlie who told me I ain't going to put you on blast if you want to drop down in the comments to say, yeah, bitch, so and so and so and so and you can. But I wasn't going to hate and say, you know, all of the little small things that I've heard about <laughs> about the mismanagement of this event. But nigga, not nigga, but neglect. Tisha, I know you ain't get on Beyonce's internet 
and call your man the entrepreneur legend Obama 2.0. Now, baby, you, he, granted, the Scots are doing some things. They are doing some things. They are making strides. They are, you know, on their road to success. I'll give it to you, baby. Y'all are on your road to success. So all the teabaggers, don't start talking shit to me, okay? But coming from AMC, <laughs> from AMC <laughs> to a bar named Black in the shopping center, to Obama 2.0 is too big of a stretch for me, Pooh. <laughs> it's just, it's just too big of a stretch for me right now. But I guess, girl, I mean, if y'all want to be Obama 2.0. That's good too. It's just a lot of layers to it though. Because if he Obama 2.0, who the fuck is Michelle? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's Friday. I'm full of shit. Tisha, if you if you Michelle 2.0, girl, we just gotta deal with it. I just, you know. When I think of most Michelle Obama type of characters and ladies, you know intelligent reserved um eloquent you know uh, great speaker <laughs> michelle is <laughs> michelle obama is one of the greatest female speakers we have you know during our time you know she just was at the presidential debate you know Speaking about Kamala and the importance of voting. Imagine if Tisha <laughs> Tisha can't even speak properly at the reunion, child. Anyway, but shout out to the Scots. We're gonna start calling the Scots Obama 2.0, okay? Okay, the Obamas. Tisha and Marceau are the or Obama or the Obamas, okay? The Obamas of, of Huntsville. That's what we're gonna start calling Tisha and Marceau. Tell me if y'all on board to start calling Tisha and Marceau the Obamas of Huntsville. <laughs> That's what we gonna do since we snickling and giggling. <laughs> since we snickling and giggling today, friend, that's what the fuck we gonna do. Tisha and Marceau, the new, uh, the Obamas of Huntsville, okay? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on, child. I'm stupid. Anyway, girl, so uh, Queen Sheba, went live yesterday shout out to queen she but i'm sure everybody is i hope y'all following her if y'all ain't y'all better do it because she gives some good tea and i love how she um i love how she delivers her message <laughs> it's totally opposite for me <laughs> but i'm here for it because you need balance in your life you know sometimes you got to keep it cute she reminds me of me before five <laughs> before five i'm talking that shit <laughs> If y'all ever see me at the meeting, y'all be like, is that the same bitch? I'm the same bitch. And what's crazy is all the people at my job, like the other girlies, they be like, what is your channel, girl? Did I... <laughs> Como se llama, girl? It ain't even my real name. Exactly. And if I find you on my channel, I'm blocking you. Exactly. Anyway, girl, so Queen Sheba said that she had reached out to Mel. Like, uh, what? And I'm paraphrasing in my own language. Queen Sheba said she uh, reached out to me like, bitch, what the fuck going on? Why is these hoes on your jock? And why is Martell acting a damn fool? And why is Tasha K hating on you? And Mel was like, bitch, I don't know what the fuck these hoes on. I don't know these hoes. I don't fuck with these hoes. I ain't never met these hoes. So she dropped some text messages like, bitch, this the last type of shit I was on with Tasha K. So I don't know why this dog face hoe is all in my motherfucking business when I don't even communicate with her so she dropped the text messages so queen she would start reading some of the text messages on the live i'm gonna just tell y'all what the text messages said basically tasha k was hitting up mel being nice nasty trying to bait mel into like an interview telling her little you know tidbits of information about martel yada 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 mel was keeping it cute and classy like oh yes okay well yeah da -da. keeping it short simple and sweet that's how you know she knew that tasha k wasn't shit kind of like mel say she handled dr heavenly exactly one thing we do know is once mel sense a little bit of fakeness in you she stopped fucking with them hoes like that and then her friends get mad because they could tell. Destiny, Nell, Stormy, all of y'all hoes. Once y'all know that Mel playing y'all with a, you know, with one or two words and she not really fucking with y'all like that, that's when y'all get mad and y'all become the ops. Anyway, 
So <clears throat> then right after Tasha K did the interview with Arion, Martell was texting Tasha K saying, hey, thank you for the interview. Arion is going to be your co-host. Basically trying to big her up so she can, you know, be a professional. He can put her out in the spotlight. I thought he was trying to do that a few times. Remember, like, maybe it was like a year ago, Martell was on Instagram and they were like on live. He was saying that was his woman. She was like cooking and shit. I feel like Martell be trying to soft launch Arion as his girl. <laughs> it's giving he be trying to soft launch like this weekend. Pictures at home coming, taking her to the other event. It's giving he be trying to soft launch this girl. Like, let me see how the public is going to receive her as my woman. This last soft launch ain't going to work because everybody talking about how bad she look and how she can't fucking dress. And Martell, I just don't think he's, <laughs> I don't think he's, he's too superficial to overlook the fact that people say she can't dress because you know Martell takes pride in his fashions and he used to being he used to stand by Melody so he used to being you know looking nice <laughs> and presenting nice in public and shit so he can't be presenting himself nicely and ain't nobody gonna fuck with Raggedy Ann so I think this soft launch is gonna be a fail because that outfit was a fail the Kentucky Derby thing it was a fail and that skirt. I, we ain't even got to keep talking about it, yeah. You see how my face turned up? <laughs> you got me questioning my outfit I'm wearing tonight, girl. Anyway. So, so basically, that's what Martell was doing. Yada, yada, yada. Then, I guess Mel showed her a text about Martell. So, right after Martell filed those fake um, allegations about Mel with the security guard and then you know the shit with Tasha K just dropped with the receipt da 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 da. Martell texts Melody. Martell Hope texts Melody sorry a million times. What? That sound like hey I done did some really really fucked up shit. Hey I'm about to do some really really fucked up shit. And you about to hear about it. And I just want to uh, preemptively say, I'm really, really sorry for this dirty ass shit I'm about to do. So it's given, maybe he sent her that text before he gave all of that information to Tasha K. And because we know that Ari posted that photo of um, this Jason, Jason Pitts with his wife, that means Ari is in on it too. Why are these two people so obsessed with Melody? Is it because she got all the money and she still got the fame? And Ari in her face, in her in her mind, I'm thinking she stayed with Martell all of those years because she wanted to get on the show and she thought he was her ticket to getting rich because he had bought her a car when he was with Mel, had her stand in the place. He was on the show. She thought she could get on the show. But now that Mel is gone, now she realizes that, damn, he ain't got these businesses. He ain't got this money. He barely on the show. He can't get me on the show. Like, damn, now we back to shopping at all these. <laughs> Y'all went from shopping at Publix. <laughs> Y'all can't even shop at Publix no more. You can't even get freshly sliced deli meat no more, bitch. You back at all these in Safeway getting meat orders. Girl, I guess... <laughs> <laughs> I guess anyway I thought that was sad though on a serious note the fact that this man said sorry a million times I really really hope Melody um, prosecutes him to the fullest extent of the law um, add on maybe some stalking harassment charges whatever she can do because he seems like a dangerous man and his fixation on her it's been like five years like for people to be like oh Mel is bitter da -da. it's been five fucking years yo it's been five years and this man is still obsessed with her. Not to mention, not only is he obsessed, but his bitch is obsessed. That million, that TikTok money is really stressing him out. The fact that he is seeing what he lost <laughs> right before his eyes is really burning his blood. And Ari, why would that burn your blood? It, I don't believe this to be true. But even if Mel was fucking with a married man, what the fuck do they have to do with coleslaw? Bitch, what the fuck do they got to do with you? I don't know, y'all. They crazy. Um, They crazy. And Ariane is crazy to even... For her to post a picture 
of the dude to do to his wife to insinuate Mel is messing with da da da. That lets you know that you're still a side piece in Martell head. In his delusional mind, Mel is still number one. Mel is still the number one woman in his life. Whether it's good, bad, da da da. His obsession is with her. And Scorpios tend to do that to a motherfucker. <laughs> we tend to have that effect on some of these niggas. But all bullshit aside, what type of woman is you laying down with a man who has another woman first and foremost in his brain? You'll always be number two in his brain. You might be number one in the flesh. But you always number two in his mind. Girl. Anyway, I guess. That's all I had to say about the Love and Marriage Huntsville shit. Um, tell me what y'all thought about all the reunion shit. Do y'all think Martell is crazy? Do y'all think, you know, I, I don't know. Tell me what y'all thought about the text messages. Him talking about he's sorry a million times. Something is wrong with that man. Let's talk about me and Gordon. And then I'm going to be out. <clears throat> so, Mia did an interview with Carlos King. First of all, Carlos King needs to be focused on their reunion. And we better get a tribute to Kiki at their reunion. While you still out here interviewing other people, we better get a tribute to Kiki. A nice tribute to Kiki. And I want him to ask Tisha and Marceau about how they really feel about the whole situation and the aftermath. And I hope he do does follow-up questions and just don't let people off the hook for all of this shit not necessarily just about the kiki stuff but all of these situations you know what i'm saying like don't he carlos king for his favorites he always lets them off the hook he don't give them follow-up questions he just let them run amok that's why the reunion needs to be hosted by somebody else they need to give me they need to have Tammy Roman up there. They need to have Tammy Roman up there hosting their damn reunion because she gonna ask the girls the questions. And if they don't answer them properly, she gonna ask the follow-up on your motherfucking ass. <laughs> and to my knowledge, she don't really fuck with nobody on the cast like that. So she'll be unbiased and impartial. Like, the fact that the fans are so invested in Love and Marriage Huntsville and Carlos King is so egotistical to the point where he won't let nobody else host a reunion is doing a disservice to your fans. Like, your fans are way too invested in Love and Marriage Huntsville for you not to give them the reunions that they deserve. I think Carlos King got it right. One reunion. One reunion I gave him his props. I think he got part one and two good. Part one and two. But then part three was trash. I don't know, girl. We'll see. Let's talk about me and Gordon. <sighs> so y'all know. Y'all know me a fucking with uh ink. <clears throat> Incognito. Every time every time I say his name, I gotta <laughs> I gotta sing the damn uh his little jingle, his little promo. That's how popular he is, I told y'all. Anyway, so me and Incognito. <laughs> That's who he is, child. So she was talking about her relationship with him. Carlos King starts asking her about the whole Gordon thing. The, I'ma sum up basically what Mia said. Mia said that Gordon is an old, freaking, perverted ass man who forces girls, young girls, he prays after young girls, forces them into sexual interactions. She said that he was kissing on one of her friends when she um when she came into the house and he was broke and wanted to use her. She thought he had money at first, but he was broke, yada yada yada. First of all, Mia is a lying ass bitch just like this. We got to take what she say with a grain of salt. Second, I don't like older men who prey on younger women. Just as a policy, I don't like it. It gives creep vibes. However, if that's what the fuck you signed up for, bitch, don't come crying to us talking about, oh, he preys on younger women. I don't give a fuck about none of that. He came into the strip club. I used to manage a strip club. I already know what time it is. If the old man came into the strip club with the money, child, that was your target. You won your target. It's your fault that you ain't do no research and didn't max one of them credit cards out to determine whether or not this man had some money for real. You signed up to be a sex partner. That's what you signing up for with an old man. He a sugar daddy. What are we talking about? He's a sugar daddy, bitch. You give him sugar and he gives you the money. That's what the tea is. So don't in turn now act like, oh, he prays after young women. No, he gives young women money so they can fuck his old ass because ain't nobody else fucking on them wrinkly ass balls or juggling them wrinkly ass balls unless he's swiping his credit card. 
unless he got a wire transfer number. So we already know what time it is. So don't now, because you want you done with his ass and you want to get with incognito, act like Gordon is doing something illegal. Gordon is being a fucking sugar daddy, bitch. If he was kissing your friend in the house, did you slap the dog shit out of your friend? Did you slap the dog shit out of Gordon? Or did you mosey your ass right on over there with him and have a threesome? Because that's what you told us y'all be doing. On the first, the first time we met y'all, y'all told us that y'all be getting other girls to come to the room with y'all. Remember? And she said that Gordon chose the girls and he likes snow bunnies. And you were snickling and giggling about it. And Candace was looking at you like you a dirty ass hoe. I didn't, everything Mia was talking about was trash to me. She said he was abusive to her, verbally abusive. Now, he did admit that he was mean to Mia. But my whole thing is, <clears throat> after two kids and you two seasons into Real Housewives of Potomac, you had your own money, Mia. You could have left. Gordon can't beat your ass. If he did act like he want to whoop your ass, you could hit him upside the head with a lamp or just kick him in the hip. You know what I'm saying? Pow, pow, and he over. Now he look like Shamar for the rest of his life. So I don't know, child. I don't know. Tell me if y'all watched the interview. Tell me if y'all was buying what Mia was selling or do y'all think she's just a disgruntled uh, side bitch with bad skin. <laughs> Mia do get oatmeal pie face, child. She does give oatmeal pie face. Oh, this girl got her blanket and walking around. I feel so bad for her. I don't know, y'all. This girl got her got a blanket and she walking around, but she got a new lace front on. <laughs> or maybe somebody gave her the lace front. If I had some cash, I'd give her some cash. Anyway, um, anyway, that's all I got, y'all. So tell me what y'all think about all the love and marriage Huntsville shit. Was y'all digging Sunny outfit? What y'all think about uh us calling the Scots the Obamas of Huntsville? Tisha said it. <laughs> the Scott a lots <laughs> or the new Obamas of Huntsville. Exactly. Anyway, y'all, I'm finna go because I gotta take my ass back to work. Make sure y'all comment, make sure y'all like, and make sure y'all subscribe. Y'all know I'm gonna talk shit in the comments. And tell me what y'all um what y'all want to get into this weekend. So I I don't know if I'm going out tomorrow, but I don't really have that much planned this weekend or whatever. So I'm gonna try to do a little live probably either tonight if I get tipsy or maybe tomorrow, like before I go to brunch or whatever. I could go live and we could talk some shit, girl. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a good day. Love y'all. Happy Friday. Don't let no bitch in this motherfucker world piss you off today exactly not after you didn't make it through this week girl exactly bye friends